Hey, everybody, and welcome to Scholar AI Founders Pod. Be sure to find us on all the typical podcast locations and find us on our YouTube channel. Um, happy late 4th of July for anyone that is uh, listening to this when it comes out. We are recording on the 4th of July, so I hope you all enjoyed the holiday and, and stayed safe. Um, you guys want to kick that off? You guys have any plans for today specifically? Shashi, I know you're doing some traveling. Care to care to elaborate? Doing a little road trip to Austin, going to see some friends and uh, watch the fireworks in, in downtown. Uh, we were chatting pre-recording and the uh, plan is to keep all the, all the fingers. <laughs> so I uh, won't be shooting any, any fireworks myself, but uh, happy to watch. <laughs> okay. What about you? Any, any firework uh, tradition or? Not really. I mean, I'm lucky in Portland that I kind of live like on a hill and Portland is just like a valley after a certain point and i'm able to just kind of like watch the horizon and there's yeah, fireworks all over at least for like I particular do, plans wonder, this just weekend just um there is ideation of a growing host, like beach trip tesla i saw friends. the last week that um figure delivered but coordinating is hard um, and there, no one set of their offered to drive to so we're still figuring that out to help out <laughs> in their assembly line I, I, the, the details of which weren't very specific i don't know what parts or what fraction of the assembly line process might be being addressed by these humanoid robots. But I just, I just think it's interesting because I, I do think we're seeing some good momentum, I guess I would describe it as in both the kind of, you know, autonomous space as it applies to cars and um, these, these kind of robots. So very, very interesting. Um, regardless, um, any closing thoughts on Tesla before we segue into um, something else Josh alluded to? Just opened up to the public. So take that kind of in any direction you want. Start with full self-driving. What do you think? Maybe bake in some future projections on how close are we to that coming to, you know, more cars, you know, beyond Tesla, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah, I'm I'm really positive on the FSD. When we had a Tesla and when we were first getting it, this was like many, many years ago. Um we had the option, okay, like, I guess, like, now when you get a modern Tesla, you get FSD as, like, a kind of, like, pay-per-use module you get as a subscription. Um, but when we were getting our Tesla at the time, it was, like, you pay for the hardware. And if you have the hardware, you can have it permanently. Um, and they kept on bumping the price up and up and up on, like, getting this hardware. Um, and so I was pretty positive, like, we should get, like, the whole point of this car is, like, the intelligence stuff. Like, the electric stuff is cool, of course, but the thing that's unique is, like, the intelligence, like... I would pay for the intelligent piece of it um, if I could and just have it permanently. And that's what we ended up doing. Um, in general, I really like FSD. I think um, it's, especially for like long drives and such, there's just such a huge difference in needing to be like super primed in, focusing all the time, like having all like senses active to like stay on the road and like engage versus like tap twice. And all of a sudden, like, you can just, like, tell, like, hey, like, get me back to home. And all you're really doing is just making sure it doesn't do something really stupid, right? Um, I think it does feel to me, like, every time they release an update, it is actually getting measurably better. Um, Like, every time they release, like, an update to the map, like, it's always just super impressive to me how strong that visualization is getting of here's what the Tesla understands exists in its environment. Um, Whether that's, like, bicyclists, like, um road signs traffic lights and interpreting those correctly i feel like it's close i think the the thing that is going to be the biggest stall is not gonna be the technology it's gonna be regulatory i think that i don't know what the process for a government saying like this is approved to be used nationwide really looks like but i assume the technology is earnestly like pretty pretty close to the point where like i think a robo taxi, like when, like what I've heard about Waymo has kind of felt different from my experience of a Tesla in particular. Um, but at least looking at like Tesla quality of FSD, I'm pretty positive that like probably like next like five to 10 years, we'd probably see like Tesla robo taxis being pretty prominent. I had the uh, opportunity to, um, to drive a friend's Model X, um, and, um, and try out the latest, um, FSD. I believe it's 12.3.6. The latest um, full si- full self driving uh, software release, and uh, I I haven't I haven't been in a Tesla in a while, and I haven't experienced the the latest of FSD in a while. So my context was not with very high expectations going in, and I was really impressed with how much 
progress has been made in full self-driving. It was way beyond where I thought it would have been at this point. Uh, I think it's a last mile problem in that it's very, very difficult, like exponentially harder to do that last five to 10% of full self-driving. Uh, but I do think 85 to 90% of it feels like it's been um, solved. And, um, and that's much more than I had expected it to be. So I was really impressed. Um, we, we turned on out full self-driving in, in neighborhood and on highway, and it did great uh, after setting a destination. Um, and uh, the, the car I was in had um, plaid mode, and so we took it on the highway and, and floored it. And uh, <laughs> it's like within three seconds, you know, I probably started from like 40 miles an hour, just kind of slow slow pace on the highway. And within within two two to three seconds, it felt like I was I was over 100, and I and I had to just to back off, crank the brakes. Uh, the regenerative braking is great, but once you're on the highway and 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 really really cranking, uh, you can't you can't rely on the regenerative braking to to slow you down from from that speed. But uh, man, it was, it was it was a rocket. It felt like a thrill, super fun. And uh, the fun element, I think, is probably something I didn't quite bake into my my expectation model uh, of where, where at least the plaid mode component of this is, it is it is really fun to, to, to floor it and go that fast uh, and accelerate that quickly. Out of curiosity, do you know if you're able to like hit full self-driving on plaid mode? Like if you want to like say, like, <laughs> hey robot, go like 120 miles per hour, could you? <laughs> there's a, I think there's an aggressive, I think there are driving modes. And yeah, I, yeah, I recall there's like a chill mode and then there's like a, an aggressive mode. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and we had it on an aggressive mode, so it felt like it was like accelerating really fast, even at like mm-hmm. city city street stops. Yeah. But um, but it wasn't it wasn't going nuts okay. on, on, <laughs> on it wasn't flooring it going north of of 100 uh, in in aggressive mode self driving. I will say uh, there's just some really interesting financial calculus around Tesla stock. Um, so I wanted to. To, to visit that. So at, at the point of recording, Tesla stock is $246, um, which on a one month basis is up 40%, uh, which really is really significant. Um, so uh, something is is happening uh, in terms of positive momentum for Tesla, which is exciting. The, the talk uh, that I keep hearing is about RoboTaxi or CyberCab and the, the option to expand there with the anticipation that there's going to be a big news uh, news announcement. The expectation is that you'll have a supervisor, someone 